To see more of our movies and be notified of new releases, please press the subscribe button. The British Expeditionary Force is often overlooked in the Dunkirk evacuation. It was the courage and sacrifice made by the BEF and the French Army which allowed the miracle of Dunkirk to take place. 10th of May 1940 German Army Group A and Army Group B cross the Belgian frontier. Germany invades Belgium, the Netherlands and France. The Belgian Army defends its frontier from fixed positions. The Belgian Army is not trained for offensive warfare, had no tanks or aircraft. In response, the British Expeditionary Force and the French Army cross the Belgian border to move into predetermined defensive positions. The British Expeditionary Force takes up position on the River Dial. The French 7th Army takes up position on the Scheldt in the Netherlands. The French 1st Army takes up position to the south of the British. 11th of May 1940. The French 9th Army takes up position with their flank protected by the Ardennes. The French 9th Army lacked transport and equipment, had only a few light tanks and no regular officers. The Ardennes forest was thought to be impassable to tanks. Nevertheless, they came. The 13th of May 1940. The German army crosses the Meuse River. The Belgian army withdraws to the Allied lines. 16th of May 1940. The French 1st Army is pierced for over 5,000 yards. German Army Group A smashes through the French 9th Army. The British stand firm. Rommel wrote in his diary, The way to the west is open. Lord John Gort Commander-in-Chief of the British Expeditionary Force, receives orders to withdraw to the line of the Scheldt River. The 17th of May, 1940, night. German Army Group A arrives at St. Quattar. German Army Group A and B charge towards the sea. Ditch by ditch, canal by canal, fighting a savage rearguard. The Allied armies fell back to the line of the Dar. German Army Group A reaches Peron, 18th of May 1940, night. The Allies fall back to the Scheldt River. 19th of May 1940. The British are in position on the Scheldt River. The French have opened the sluice gates to flood the land. The Scheldt River is only three feet deep. Further to the south, the German Army crosses the Canal du Nord. The Panzers race to the coast. 20th of May 1940. German Army Group A reaches the coast. Panzer Spitter Battalion arrives at Abbeville on the Channel Coast but have no orders on which way to turn. The BEF is cut off from its supply dumps, ammunition, fuel and food. It is cut off from its armoured reinforcements. RAF airfields are overrun. The RAF must now support the army from England. Non-essential personnel and non-combatant troops begin to be evacuated. 21st of May 1940. The British counter-attack. Near Arras, they make contact with the 7th Panzer Division. In the lead tank is Field Marshal Erwin Rommel. Every British tank, anti-tank gun and anti-aircraft gun open up on the 7th Panzer Division. SS Division Tottenkopf, as yet unblooded, shows signs of panic. The British counter-attack penetrates the German line for 10 kilometres before they are forced to withdraw to avoid encirclement. To the northwest, the 1st Panzer Division was close to Calais. 22nd of May 1940. Boulogne is besieged. The Germans suffer heavy losses but establish a foothold in Calais. 23rd of May 1940. The British counterattack at Arras has shaken the Germans. At 1810, von Rundstedt, fearing being cut off, halts his armour. 50% of his panzers are lost to the enemy or broken down. 
Hitler assured by Goring that the Luftwaffe could annihilate the BEF agreed to the halt. Lieutenant General Franklin withdraws from Arras through a gap only five miles wide. 24th of May 1940, the Belgium army fails to counterattack. 25th of May 1940, Field Marshal Fidor von Bock exploits the weaknesses between the Belgium and British lines. The Germans demand the surrender of Calais. Brigadier Claude Nicholson replied, Surrender? No, I shall not surrender. If you want Calais, you will have to fight for it. Churchill said to Brigadier Nicholson, Every hour you continue to exist is of the greatest help to the BEF. You must continue to fight. On the night of the 25th, small boats enter Calais Harbour to bring out the wounded. There is an open breach in the Belgian line between Menin and Desselgem. The BEF hold 87 miles of the front. At some critical points, there is only a single gun. They hold up the enemy with magnificent self-sacrifice. Gort abandons plans to counter-attack self and moves to fill the gap in the Belgian line. 26 May 1940, Operation Dynamo commenced. Message from the Secretary of State of War to General Gort. There is no course open to you but to fall back on the coast. Already 27,936 non-essential personnel had been evacuated. Calais is attacked by dive bombers, high-level bombers, fighter planes, tanks and infantry. At 3.30pm, the garrison at Calais are overwhelmed and taken prisoner. Brigadier Claude Nicholson did not survive imprisonment. Relentlessly and savagely, the Belgian forces are attacked from the air. At Dover Castle, Admiral Ramsey receives the message, commence Operation Dynamo. Rescuing the British expeditionary force from Dunkirk begins. 27th of May 1940, 7,669 troops rescued from Dunkirk. A German pincer movement cuts off Lille. Hitler orders the renewal of the armoured attack. The 1st, 3rd, 4th and 42nd divisions slipped clear of the pincer movement. With them came a third of the French army. During the battle, the 4th Brigade ceased to exist. The 5th and 6th Brigades were cut to pieces. The Belgian front line crumbles. Under ceaseless bombing, the Belgian line breaks. King Leopold III of Belgium asks Germany for an armistice. Dunkirk Harbour is destroyed by the Luftwaffe. Due to enemy guns, the short sea route Z between Dover and Dunkirk is abandoned during daylight. 28th of May 1940. 17,804 troops rescued from Dunkirk. With the surrender of the Belgians, 20 miles of the front lay open. Lieutenant General Alan Brooke, in a complicated nighttime manoeuvre, right-wheeled to fill the gap. At Newport, Brigadier Edward Lawson's ragtag force under heavy mortar and machine gun fire hold the breach. Surrounded at Lille, the French First Army fought on gallantly, hopelessly, with honour. After they are surrendered, still carrying their weapons, the French army marched through Lille and are saluted by the Germans. For four days, the French First Army held up a large part of the German army. The first of the little ships arrive at Dunkirk. It is their job to pick men off the beaches and transfer them to larger vessels. 29th of May 1940, 47,310 troops rescued from Dunkirk. The whole of the Dunkirk perimeter is under extreme pressure with General Franklin's 5th Division under the heaviest attack. At sea, the situation is desperate with ships sailing through a maelstrom of bombs, shells, torpedoes and mines. Three British destroyers are sunk and six damaged. HMS Wakefield was hit by a torpedo and sank in 15 seconds. All troops below deck and most of her crew were killed. HMS Grafton 
was hit by two torpedoes but stayed afloat long enough for most of her crew to be picked up. HMS Montrose had her bow blown away and had to be towed back to Dover, stern first. Auxiliary anti-aircraft vessel HMS Crested Eagle was hit by three bombs and ran aground ablaze. Over 300 troops were lost. Losses to the destroyers were unsustainable. Reluctantly, the Admiralty withdrew the new destroyers. 30th of May 1940, 53,823 troops rescued from Dunkirk. The Dunkirk perimeter has been dramatically reduced. The BEF and evacuating ships are all in range of the enemy guns. Poor weather stops the Luftwaffe bombing the ships and troops. Army engineers build piers made from vehicles. This vastly increases the flow of troops from the beaches. The little ships triumph and pick up over 30,000 troops from the beaches. Civilians also work on the transport ships. Despite being unarmed and clearly marked, hospital ships were also attacked. Below deck, caring for the wounded, women also serve. French troops are given an equal opportunity to board British ships. French and Belgian vessels also assist in the evacuation. French destroyer Burrasque, loaded with 1,200 troops, detonates a mine and sinks. Many are killed in the sea when her own depth charges explode. Admiral Ramsey has urgent talks with the first sea lord and the new destroyers return to Dunkirk. 31st of May 1940, 68,014 troops rescued from Dunkirk. The BEF withdraws to the old fixed fortifications on the French border. Aided by an observation balloon, the La Pen beaches are heavily shelled. Lord Gort was ordered to return to England. In correct military procedure, he handed over his command to a corps commander. General Alexander takes command of the Dunkirk defences. Headquarters staff leave for England on HMS Keith. Gort is taken to HMS Hebe. In the evening, he too returns to England. To assist with the withdrawal from Newport, 18 Blenheims and six Albacores from Fleet Air Arm attack the enemy. 1st of June 1940, 64,429 troops rescued from Dunkirk. At night, the British and French fall back to the Canal des Chats on a line between Axum and Glidevald. The beach at La Pen is shelled, bombed and strafed. Ships come under heavy air attack and are shelled from the shore. Royal Navy ships are desperately short of ammunition. Four destroyers, a gunboat, an anti-aircraft ship, two channel ferries are amongst the 31 ships sunk and 11 seriously damaged. Sailing by daylight is stopped, but at dusk the ships return. At casualty clearing stations, lots are drawn to see who will stay with the wounded. Two hospital ships sent to pick up the wounded were both attacked. The enemy penetrate the perimeter crossing the Canal des Chats. The Loyals counter-attack and push the enemy back across the canal. 2nd of June 1940, 26,256 troops rescued from Dunkirk. When most of the British troops had been evacuated, General Alexander boarded HMS Venomous and returned to England. HMS Fenimus would make two more trips to Dunkirk. On the 3rd of June, she rescued 957 troops, and on the night of the 4th, 463 troops. The St Helier had the honour of being the last ship carrying BEF troops to leave Dunkirk. 2330. Captain William Fennant, Senior Naval Officer Dunkirk, signalled BEF evacuated. 3rd of June 1940, 
26,746 troops rescued from Dunkirk. The majority are French troops. The final perimeter at Dunkirk. Supported by artillery, the Germans assault from Spiker towards Dunkirk. The French 68th Infantry Division hold them. The French counterattack with the last of their tanks. Night of the 3rd and 4th of June 1940, last night of the evacuation, 26,175 troops rescued from Dunkirk. At nine o'clock in the morning, Dunkirk surrendered. 338,226 troops had been saved. The RAF lost 106 aircraft. 68,111 servicemen were killed, missing, wounded or taken prisoner. The Royal Navy lost six destroyers, eight personnel ships five minesweepers, 17 trawlers, one hospital ship, and 188 smaller vessels. The army lost 2,472 guns, 63,878 vehicles, and half a million tons of supplies. 693 British vessels took part in the Dunkirk evacuation. The British Army survived. It would meet Rommel again in North Africa and beat him. And on the 6th of June 1944, the British Army returned to France. Thank you for watching. To see more of our videos and be notified of new releases, press the subscribe button. It's free.